Don't forget. The best advice that I could give someone starting their weight loss journey right now is to learn the body first. Right through with a brand new rap music. If you're new to me, drop a comment and tell me how you like my plant. Most people put their plants in the background. Like, what's wrong with the forefront plant? Is it? Does it make you feel uncomfortable? What even qualifies me to talk about fat loss? I'm not your typical weight loss YouTuber with the shirt off talking about carbs and macros. You know what I'm saying? I did get a degree in this stuff. I am a fitness instructor. I've collected hundreds of anecdotal stories from just being in my position, but I feel as if none of that uniquely qualifies me. You are in the hands of someone that is passionately driven to find the answer, being an open-minded, lifelong learner that's committed to figuring it out, and I'm not afraid to say when I'm wrong. I feel as that is what uniquely qualifies me. I don't just read the first Google search, I'm If you really are a beginner, I am so happy you're here with me right now because before you get tossed into the crazy wild world of the weight loss industry, I want to make sure you have this foundation. I'm gonna give you some mindset stuff, some practical stuff, some things to avoid, some things to go for, and overall perspective. We're going to go over three tips that'll make your journey foolproof. Number one, don't exercise yet. We cannot out-exercise ignorance. Ignorance will always win. Every time I sit down and record, somebody wanna cut grass or fly a plane. So let's get ignorance out of the way. There are some things that we have to take care of. And what you'll find is that exercise is really secondary. And by secondary, I mean, it shouldn't even be thought of right now. Exercise is like hanging up a painting with a hammer and a nail instead of a thumbtack. A thumbtack would get the job done perfectly fine, but a hammer and a nail would make it just a bit more effective and sturdy. But it's harder to use, and if you're not careful, you may hammer your thumb or even put a hole in the wall. Right now, it's all about baby steps. We have to learn how to use a thumbtack. What does that mean? Nutrition, nutrition, nutrition and learning the mechanisms of the body. Those two things, very important. Of course, I could break down every mechanism of the body. I think it's phenomenal in the way it does things. However, we'd be here for a smooth three hours. So I, I'd rather be a GPS for you right now. This is gonna be a road trip. There's only two mechanisms we're gonna overview right now. And I'm gonna refer you elsewhere to learn them more in depth. The first mechanism, digestion. What happens when I eat? Where does the food go? The short answer is that it becomes you. It's a wild concept, but the cells of your eye could have come from an avocado. The cells of your liver could have been made of the Skittles you ate. No need to become a master in digestion. You don't need to know all of the big fancy words, but a basis of understanding is necessary. You can check out this video by Crash Course. I'll link it down below. The second mechanism is insulin, and it's key where fat comes from. It's a hormone, and I explained it pretty in depth in a separate video. I'll also link that below. Watch that after you have a decent understanding of how digestion works, but insulin, the hormone is really simple. It's really just food you eat and food makes glucose in the blood. And then that calls on the response of the insulin hormone and that stores fat. Now, like I said, let's talk nutrition, nutrition, nutrition. I have a question. Where do cashews come from? Oreos, olive oil. What? Where do Pringles come from? You made it to this part of the video. You deserve for me to tell you the golden rule. Consider the process. Every food we consume has to go through steps to end up on our plate. A little tomato was grown in a big garden, packaged with other little tomatoes that were put on a truck, sent over to a grocer, it sat on a shelf for some time, and you picked it up, and now it's in your salad. Now that Dorito you ate! First they ripped the corn from a stalk, the corn is cooked and made into flour, then dough cut into triangles, heated in a hot box, fried in hydrogenated oil, powdered with cheese and cheese derivatives that I quite honestly don't know how they make. Add a little more oil, add some artificial food coloring, then season. Packed, shipped to a grocer near you, sits for a couple days, you picked it up, now it's in your walk and taco. The tomato isn't bad. The Dorito isn't even inherently bad. Considering the process is key here, usually deciding the foods with the least amount of steps to get to you, well, to first even exist and then get to you, the least amount of steps we're talking, the better. I truly believe that if you knew how food communicated with the body, you would know exactly what to choose. You would be unstoppable. And the best references I recommend to learn how food communicates with the body is Food by Dr. Mark Hyman, which is probably the Bible for food, and then Eat Smarter by Sean Stevenson. I'm just a fan of Sean. If you learn food, you are quite literally bulletproof. Yeah, we're keeping the shooting analogy going. You are bulletproof, especially for this next tip. They just want your money. Oh yeah! You ain't think we was gonna get political, did you? Let's play a game of Johnny. Who wants my money? 
Cheerios. Cheerios just want your money. The brand with the kind B boasting of how this bowl of grain and sugar is somehow heart healthy. Ladies and gentlemen, the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, they are the government organization in charge of regulating our food. And they don't really rule with an iron fist, more like a SpongeBob fist. The reason Cheerios can say that their food is heart healthy is because of what we call a structure function claim. Meaning a company or food is allowed to boast about how their ingredients can affect your body, but they cannot say that they treat a particular disease. With this logic, McDonald's could promote brain health with their Big Mac, and they probably would if we didn't see them as a quick fast food joint. Now, some some companies who actually don't give a rat's behind about your health have mastered this rule. This is one of the ways we get got. Take one step on that rope and I'll cut it. Johnny, who else wants my money? Calorie centric programs or calorie centric anything. The actual measurement of a calorie didn't originate for food and yet it ended up being used as a measurement for it. The problem is it treats a calorie as a calorie. This completely disregards how different foods communicate with the body. There are some big name brand companies capitalizing and profiting off of us that don't understand this. We join their program and next thing you know we're eating some bar that's funny tasting, highly processed and got like some dodgy ingredients and doesn't really matter because it's on their dessert menu and it fits within their calorie limit. You see how calories can kind of distort the picture here? Low calorie diet Coke is still Coke. And Coke did not come from the earth. On everything, get ready for this huge misconception I'm finna tell you. You can't burn meals off. There is no such thing as taking a meal back. There's no undo button. And you know this, or you're soon to know, because you just learned digestion, or you're about to learn once you check the description. Working out so you can have a big dessert later, it's just not how the body works. It's going to take that exercise session as it was, and it's going to eat that dessert as it is. The two don't cancel each other out. They're not playing tug of war or anything like, they're not even on the same playing field. We're talking hockey and baseball. Becoming overwhelmed when setting a goal is almost second nature because if there's this progression of steps and with that, it can feel like a tall task and you really don't know when you're gonna get there. It could take years. And I bet you felt a little anxious just thinking that. This is where the idea of the challenge is game changing because this the mind has this incredible ability to lock in and focus on something as long as it is in the foreseeable future. A window of time is powerful. There is a greater success rate in saying, I will do X until X versus saying, I will do X indefinitely. Have an end date. And this isn't the end date for the entire goal. This isn't goal setting. Let me tell you what this is. A challenge is done so that you can learn what it takes, but also prove that you have the discipline to build the habits to actually do it. That way you make sure what you're doing is actually effective. You wouldn't want to be tossed into a room as the head surgeon with a knife ready to do surgery if you never learned the steps prior to doing it. Yeah, you okay, you aspire to be a surgeon, you wanna cut people up and do the stuff, but you haven't learned the steps. So well, that was a far left field analogy, but you see where I'm going with this. Some example challenges. I won't eat any foods that come from a factory for 45 days. I won't eat over processed bread and carbs for 60 days. I can only eat what comes from the earth for 80 days. These are examples, don't use these. I want you to come up with your own after some genuine thought and you make up the rules. Obviously this can only be done after you learned everything that we talked about previously, do not put the car before the horse. And here's the key, you're not going to do just one challenge because 80 days of getting it in is nice, but it may not get you to exactly where you wanna be. You're gonna do one challenge after another, after another, after another. That way the overall endpoint, the overall goal is broken up into chapters. When setting a challenge, I recommend at least 40 days, but at most 120. Like I said, it has to be a foreseeable window of time. Now, if what you're committing to seems a bit rough, then I recommend doing a pre-challenge or a trial challenge, something that is just four to 14 days long to get your feet wet and see if you're capable of doing it for a longer stint. When setting up a challenge, make it trackable. Ask me what I mean by trackable so I can put it in a video. Bro, just, what do you mean by trackable? I am glad that you asked. Dear person watching, you are doing this because you want to look and feel better. When it comes to the method of tracking your progress, do not use a scale. The number on the scale has nothing to do with how you feel about yourself. Oh, Johnny, yes it does. That number is big and I don't like it. No, it doesn't. How you fit in your clothes? What do you see when you step out of the shower? 
How do you feel when you're walking down a street in public? How's your self-esteem simply existing? Those are the things that determine how you feel about yourself. The number on the scale is missing. So much of the picture is not even funny. The best way to track, in my opinion, is taking a front, side, and rear photo of yourself in the same spot in the same lighting every three to four weeks. Now, if you need to measure something numerically, I get it you can use a measuring tape. Inches tell a more detailed story than the scale. I, I, I see it all the time. The scale has, has made some rough cases of frustration. It's been the source of some rough cases of anger. And I want to not have you go through that stuff. There is anxiety that's uh, attached to just getting on the scale. I want you to be able to avoid that as a beginner. Comment, 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 comment questions below. I really hope that helped. I'm gonna get about y'all way. <laughs> All right, that's how it's gonna be.